Coach Martin, what were the keys defensively that you all were trying to achieve? Obviously, you know, Culver is going to get a lot of your attention. It looked like you're really trying to force him sideways, do some different things. What, what were the goals you had there? We wanted to team guard Culver. Uh, we started out with Emmett, where we knew Jermaine, even Lamont, Chase would have to guard him. So they did a great job of doing that. And our plan was, when possible, deny him. Don't let him get the ball. Make him work to get the ball. Uh, I think that was our game plan. And also, uh, we wanted to make Moretti bounce it. He's been probably the most efficient player in the Big 12. So we wanted to run at him and make him bounce it. And our guy stuck to the game plan. It got kind of nervous down at the end. But that's what happened when you have freshmen. They have to... Uh, they have to learn the hard way, and as coaches, you know we gotta we gotta be patient with them. Sometimes it's easy to lose patience, but you learn these things as freshmen, and you get better as you get older. Well, it's also part of the deal when you're playing a really good team, and Texas Tech's a really good team. Yeah, I, I think as a group, though, we we feel like the one one time we played them at home, we should have won that game. We we shot ourselves in the foot, and playing them in Lubbock, they just outplayed us. So. Um, I think these guys, uh, they just had a sour taste in their mouth. And once again, I got to give them all the credit. They stuck to the game plan. They stuck to the game plan on offense and defense. And some of the young guys made great plays. Uh, then Texas Tech changed things up, put the ball in Culver's hands to let him bring it up the court. Did that change a little bit of the way you were trying to execute things or just, hey, you got to be aware that he's going to have the ball crossing the half-court line? Yeah, well, the ball's going to be in his hands, and we knew as the game – went on and got closer and toward the end, he would have the ball. But that being the case, our, you got to give credit to our guys. They did a great job of sitting down and guarding him. You can't hold a guy like that down for 40 minutes. He's going to get off at some point in the game, and he really started getting off toward the end. But, you know, we made free throws. We got big-time rebounds. And like I said, I couldn't be more happy for our guys after all they've been through this year. And uh, you just it's good to see kids smile and enjoy themselves. and. After the game, I was trying to tell him, calm down. We haven't won the Big 12 championship. We just beat Texas Tech. So two more days and two more wins like that, then we can jump up and down. But right now, we're going to concentrate on either playing Kansas or Texas. I'm not going to ask you to compare or decide which freshman has made the most improvement, but you talked about the fulfillment of that, seeing the way that Derek has come on and just turned everything around, the way Jordan has progressed. Uh, Emmett obviously has been making strides, and tonight kind of blows up a little bit. Is that the biggest thing for you as a coach, to seeing how these guys have progressed? Yeah, well, Derek has been getting minutes for a long time, and so has Jordan. So to see Emmett play like that is a, is a, a surprise to me, but he did well. The reality is, as a point guard, Jordan has the toughest job. The hardest thing to transition to from high school to college is a point guard. And to put the ball in his hands, he's made some mistakes, but, you know, he works so hard, you know that Jordan's going to figure it out. Sometimes you'd like him to figure it out sooner than later, but you know his heart's always in the right place. We just got to make sure he, he learns these end-of-the-game situations and realize, hey, we're playing against the clock, we're not playing against the other team, and time and score is important.